Hello, this is another video that's aimed at beginners in the world of photography. So if you're not a beginner, I apologize. I'll link a video that you can click to, another one of mine up there. If you are a beginner, you might be wondering, hopefully you clicked on this video because you're wondering about creating a panoramic image. So I'm gonna show you today using Photoshop Elements just how you do that. So some people might think it's a good idea to just head out and take a shot of the whole landscape or the cityscape. I'm going to be talking about a cityscape in this instance with their wide angle lens. But actually, if you've got a long lens, if, if you were using the wide angle lens, the idea would be to take a shot of the whole thing and then crop it down. But then you're losing pixels. So if you've got a long lens like my 70 to 200, I went and I took seven or eight different shots of the city at 200 mil so I could get enough detail lots of detail in the shots which I could then stitch together to create a panorama with lots of detail in it which is also a bigger size file so it could be used to print at a higher scale I'm actually going to be using it on our church website so I'm quite excited about sending it over and using it in that in that way so I've got Photoshop Elements here. I use Photoshop Elements. I don't need full Photoshop for what I do. Photoshop Elements, it was a one-off fee. I'm using Photoshop Elements 13, and there are new versions of it. I think it's up to, well, probably 2019 by now. So this one's a little bit out of date, but it should be the same. It should be fairly simple and fairly similar to what you can do on the new software. So what I'm gonna do, you open it up and you click on Enhance. And if you scroll down, you'll see a thing, a thing called uh, Photo Merge. And then if you click across, you'll see Photo Merge Composure, uh, Photo Merge Compose, Photo Merge Exposure, Photo Merge Faces. We want Photo Merge Panorama. So we click that and it opens up a new window, or it should do anyway in a second. And then we can, you can select on the left, Auto, Layout, or you can select for Perspective, cylindrical, collage, reposition stuff. But what we need to do first is click browse and then we need to go into the folder where all the images are and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven images to select. Select the images, all the images that you want and click OK and then that brings them in and then click OK again and then this is where Photoshop Elements does its magic. This is the photo merge process. So this is where you want to go and make a brew. I've still got a bit left in here, so I'll just sit and wait. And I'll come back to you in a second once the spinning wheel of death has finished doing what it does. Here it comes now. It's just going through the last process. As I say, if you're shooting individual files at full zoom and then you're stitching them together, you're going to get far more detail in the, in the image at the end, which is... A definite benefit of doing it this way instead of taking a, a one shot of everything and then cropping it down because obviously if your shot is 300 pixels by 200 pixels or whatever it is 3000 by 2000 then you're going to cut that down but if you've got seven lots of 3000 by 2000 and you stitch them together it's going to be a far superior file so it pulls it in like this and as you can see, there's bits missing at the top and bottom. Maybe I didn't get the horizon quite straight in this instance. However, I think I thought I did. I had my tripod level. Maybe it wasn't quite perfect. But it says, would you like to automatically fill in the edges of your panorama? And in this instance, I'm going to click yes. And then it will fill in using all the data that I captured. It will fill this in to make it one long shot. So again, you just have to wait a few minutes whilst it does its job. It's a bit time consuming, but it's worth it in the end, as opposed to what I've already said, taking a wide shot and cropping it down because this will be a much more detailed file. So once this is done, I'll be left with, I've already made the, I've already, I've already done a, here's one I made earlier, but I think it was 22,000 pixels by 3000 pixels so it's obviously very very wide as you can see here it's filled in the blanks filled in the gaps 
and then I just do my normal way of doing things where I'd uh, boost the boost the contrast and just make it look how I want it to look. It was a very bright grey overcast day and the 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 um the sky isn't quite how I want it to be so I will do those little tweaks now and then I'll pop this image on the screen for you to see. So there you have it, a very, very easy way to use the software that you've got, the programs on your computer to make far superior panorama images than taking one shot and cropping it down. I really encourage you to do so. If you've got a long lens, you don't have to shoot at full zoom. You could shoot at less and get in more of the sky and more of the foreground. Thank you for watching. I'll be back again on the next video to show you how to put a panorama image onto Instagram. Hopefully I'll see you on that one. Stay safe and I'll see you soon.